Cool, there we go. Hello everyone, how's it going team here? And this is BXGS, a show about building things with JavaScript. Um, this time around, we got some changes to the channel. In case you haven't seen a video yet, go have a look at it. Um, if you are exclusively watching my live streams and videos on Twitch, then thing is I got accepted into Entrepreneur First program and we'll be building a startup starting April and actually next week rather than April because I'm going to Berlin next week and I'm going to be traveling there and um, I'll basically have less time for live streams like this but I will um, sort of try to alternate the programming and non-programming ones and it seems like more quite a lot of you guys are interested in listening to how the hell does Entrepreneur First works and what I'll be doing there so I might as well talk about that too. Now, uh, today we're not going to be doing a proposal, but we are going to be looking at a library that is called React Easy State, which is something, I mean, it's, it's not completely new. So I think the first initial release was quite some time ago, but I've uh, basically used it in production in one of the uh, projects uh, like four or five days ago um, I, we started building it now it's in production running and everything and um it basically blew my mind how good this library is and in my opinion more people should know about it and more people should try it out because it is quite damn amazing and i think this is might be the next like big redux thing so um yeah let us Create a folder, we'll call it easy, um, call it rest demo, right? No, I guess that's, you know what, react, act easy state demo. Um, that is a very long name, but okay. Just gonna go with that, right? So I'm gonna git init here and I'm gonna do npm init minus y. Right, so we got our basic project, fire up the VS code. Um, full screen there we go slightly larger um now we would need to build some apps so we are gonna react app obviously so as always you know that i'm a huge fan of next.js so we're gonna go with uh next.js as a template right and um, i'm gonna create pages i don't think we're gonna do anything like super fancy tonight but you know export defaults if hello world we don't like anymore um blah 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 sort off i don't care about that so we need to ignore node modules git ignore um you know what we don't this vs code thing here okay git add git commit basic next js setup right so we got this thing uh all right we actually i forgot to add the script so i'm gonna copy that right now and then amend that commit because I don't want to mess up the history. I'll copy this. Paste it over here. Git, um, git amends. There we go. Done. Okay, so we got the basic setup, right? So we yarn, uh, run yarn dev. Uh, we should be able to go to local, oh, bleh, no, localhost 3000. Thank you very much. And here's our hello world, right? So we got the basic page. Now, let us start with a tutorial of the React Easy State. So first of all, we have to install it. All right, so I'm going to do yarn at Easy State. Then I'm just going to copy this bit here and uh, do it like this, right? So we are going to look at the source code in a second, but uh, let me just show you that it actually works and make sure that it actually works myself. <laughs> And after that, we can um, actually start looking at the library, right? Um, okay, yeah, because we need to cast the time to string, right? There we go. Uh, now you can see the clock are actually working, right? And uh, let's have a look at the code. So we have two methods from the React Easy State. We have a store method and we have a view method. Store method is a wrapper around an object that makes this store uh, reactive, right? And uh, the view method is what wraps the view to make the view react to the store. In this case, we just uh, basically, once you do that, you can just modify the store as if it was a simple JavaScript object. In this case, we just set time to the new date every 100 milliseconds, every second, right? Now, you can see it works and it's amazingly easy to do. 
So um, let us do something a bit more complicated with it, right? So this is way too simple. We are, we are, um, I think this is kind of boring, right? So I'm going to create components here and I'm going to create store.js. I'm going to move our store to a separate component, right? So I'm going to say a store as create store because I think there's actually like, you know, since it's a function, it has to be named create store and uh, we're going to say that this is a store right so and it's going to be export default store right there we go so here's our basic export for now let's just put it as a time and uh, this case we are no i actually need a view here so in this case we're going to have our um yes yeah so it's going to be store with store time Who's, uh, come on, I am terrible at this to string. There we go. Okay, so we import store uh, from that going to be component store, right? And uh, theoretically, if I didn't screw anything up, we should see one date. So right, we don't really change the store in any way. So now we need to um, implement something to basically show off how the store works. So what I'm thinking is we can just do the hacker news client as usual, this is sort of the go to thing, right? So there was the HN API. If I remember, where was it? Um, was it here? Is it this one? It, yeah, it is this one. All right. So um, here's our store, right? So we're gonna have let's let's just grab the hacker news API and do the simple thing with it. So we are going to grab I think they have the top articles, right? So there we go. There's our top articles. So we're going to take this. We're going to create some URLs, top articles URL. We don't need the pretty printing because we're going to be querying that. And I don't actually need the template literal here. I just can do a simple string. So I'm going to say articles here, right? So we're going to have an array of articles. We are going to have, uh, what else do they have? We have the articles, top articles, which returns us an array of IDs, right? So after that, we need to get and um, resolve that into the item itself. And the items are here, right? So this is going to be our um, const article ID, I guess, generate, um, I put up const as usual, generate article URL. So this is going to be a function. It's going to take an ID and return a new string. Once again, we don't need pretty printing here. We're going to say this is going to return a string like this, right? Very straightforward. And once we have the article, we have the kids, which I think it's also uses item. Yes. So yes, in this case, we're going to say generate um, yeah, item URL, right? We're going to have current article, current article, going to be false, and we're going to have comments, right, which is going to be array as well. So, so far, we are not doing any magic here. So this is going to be our base data, basic data structure. And then there's going to be our methods. Um, so there are two ways of building the stores. Essentially, you can put in methods right away. So like, you know, we can say get articles it's going to be here method and it's going to be like a sync and then we can do our stuff here. And uh, that's going to work. Um, addition or alternatively, you could actually just say that, okay, this is a const get articles method, which is a sync. It's a function. And that also works. So this basically whatever you prefer. So in my case, I actually prefer functions because it is easier to work with them. And I am going to do it this way. And uh, additionally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export the store and functions as a separate entities using named exports, right? So we would have to actually import a store like this. Right. Um, okay, so we got our get articles function, which means we have to actually fetch that stuff. Uh, so we get to fetch top articles. So we're going to say article IDs is going to be a wait fetch and then we just uh, resolve it to JSON, right? Okay. Um, and let's just say store article IDs, oh no, wait, articles, right? Equal article um, IDs. Uh, did I screw up article spelling? Yes, I did. Okay. What? 
Okay, screw up con spelling as well. Man, I'm too tired today. Okay. And we need to export them, right? So there we go. So we got our get articles function, but it doesn't really do much right now. It just fetches the URL and then gets the IDs, right? But uh, the thing is, if we, we get the storm, get, get articles function. So right now we would have to rewrite this component a bit. So let's say class uh, index page stands react component, right? And uh, render is going to be this. Turn that stuff. Okay. And then we have a constructor. Got props. So we say super props. And uh, in this case, we only need state, but uh, component did mount, for example. So uh, we, we will request the data on mount, right? Is gonna say this state so that stop the linter stops complaining about that uh, because we are probably gonna extend it later on, right? Because we need to click on stuff and so on and so forth. Okay, and uh, yeah, we have to say that this is index page. It should be wrapped in the view function to make it reactive, and uh, then we just state get articles. Um, and I misspelled articles as well. How the hell? Articles. I think that is correct. <laughs> yeah, that looks fine. So we just a call a function, right? So. I reload that. Okay, uh, we are doing the wrong thing. So here is going to be store articles. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave, I should render it. Yeah, so it's going to render it like this, but uh, this is not what we want. So let me just stringify it. And uh, I want to like this and then change div to pre so that we can actually see it slightly better format, right? So we got our article thing and um, the function that fetches them looks extremely simple. So all we do is we just assign it to the store, which is, in my opinion, quite amazing. Right, so uh, let's continue. So we got the article IDs, uh, which means that we need to actually convert them to articles, which I'm going to say await promise all, and we're going to map those article IDs. So first of all, it's going to be map to uh, generate item URL, right? So we generate it from IDs, and then we're going to map it now we have the URLs, we're going to map the URL to fetch URL, then our, our JSON, right? So we should get uh, resolved articles, essentially, if we reload that, did I screw something up? Or I guess it just takes, um, oh, yeah, it will take some time, right? Because there's quite a lot of articles there. So what we are going to do is, I mean, we can probably wait, but it's going to be like 200 million requests. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a lot of articles. There's a lot of requests. So let's make it slightly simpler and slice first 10, I guess. Right. So let's just get 10 articles and map over them. That should make it quite much faster, right? So that and there's our articles. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we have relatively fast rendering and uh, relatively fast resolution of the articles. So let's take those articles and render them in some nice way that is not just json right so we are going to say that in this case store articles um, or articles map so i'm going to map over them and i'm going to say article is um so what kind of data do we have here so we have a title and we have the url we have a score right so let's just uh, say say react fragments don't really care about the wrapper in this case so it's going to be div e is going to be um article yes url is yeah i mean it's unique identifier so we're going to go for url here then we're going to say h1 um is going to be article article title right um and it's going to be wrapped into a href this, um, we would actually need a href in this case, we want our own link here, right? So we're going to do that. Um, but okay. So just do this and close the a so that we have actually some link. Close this and uh, score, I guess, yeah, we can put a score somewhere next to it, say, and uh, am I mistyping everything today? And, going to be article score and that's basically it so now we yeah okay so the that is probably a bit too big um maybe i just style it myself instead of doing all of that right so this now should align them yeah in a nicer way 
let's say class name um, article and in this case let's just say style j6 style it with inline some inline j6 styles the um hell if i remember how the uh, guys at the next js call this thing but whatever so it works like this and say um margin bottom like bottom five pixel or something right so it's a bit more go okay so it's a bit more uh, bit more spacey <laughs> call it this way article a is gonna be margin right five pixels so again it has more space come on sort of there we go okay now we have sort of a list and now we need to allow clicking this and showing uh, or actually loading and showing the article um data right so first of all i think i just drag in the bulma again because i mean i feel like we need a grid some some sort of a grid to show the article on the right side right but i want to like we can use css grid properly but i don't actually remember it that well so but i guess you know what so let's just do CSS grid because why the hell not? Yeah, there we go. You can see I refer to that quite a lot. So we got we need a wrapper. Name wrapper. Uh, gonna be our div. This is gonna be our grid, and then we're gonna have div class name f column. Diff, and then we're going to have diff class name right column, and uh, that's it, right? So content here, right? So now we just take this uh, wrapper code here. I don't, so we got yeah, auto rows. We, I don't know if we need to template columns, repeat, I guess, like this, and uh, we need this stuff. So this is gonna be left column, right? It's gonna be column one row. Yes, one third. I guess one third is fine. So it's gonna be two thirds. I guess yeah, we repeat three. So this f agreed row is gonna be one as well, and this is gonna be right call, right? So there we go. I think that should work here. There's our articles. There we go. There's our articles. So the content. Uh, a bit why is it not why is it so long am i misunderstanding how the grid works um oh okay so it should be one two i guess right there we go okay and this one should be e you so small two, four four yes there we go uh, and this should be one okay so uh one more thing we want a loading indicator right so we have the loading now um so i guess we could say loading articles right false and what we're going to do here is going to say state loading articles equals true and then once we assign them oh whoops that is not the place i want to say false right so that's all we want to do. And now once we have um, what we do here is we say store loading articles. If it's loading articles, we're going to say then loading articles. Obviously, you, you know, in a proper app, you would show the uh, loading indicator here. And if the articles are already loaded, we are just going to render them. So if I refresh the page, we're going to see loading articles here, then we're going to see articles. Now here comes more magic coming from the easy store um, or easy statement. I always want to call it React Easy Store, which is not correct. Um, but yeah, React Easy State. Okay, so here's our link, right? So we we need to say, okay, on click, you are going to this select article, right? So we got this this select article. I'm just gonna self bind it, uh, bind this. Whoops. Probably better to use something like auto bind, but I'm too lazy for that. So let's put it below this. Let's select article, and uh, it is actually 
that is not correct because it should be doing this because we don't even need to bind it because it needs to pass the article i guess yeah it would be better if we just pass event as well so that we can cancel all the jumping right so we don't need this bind here actually and uh, this is gonna be article events and events prevents default so that nothing come on prevents default. it's not hard there we go all right, so what we need to do now is we need a function that will set current article and fetch comments, right? So we're gonna create it. On set current article. And this is gonna be a sync because we're gonna be fetching stuff. So we're gonna say article here. All we need to do is, first of all, let's say that we have a loading comment. Uh, I guess below would be a better place loading comments false right so again loading comments true there's our loader and next thing is then we say store for an article article right and now we need to take that article and um uh, did, 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 hell if i remember how the i think it has like children or something kids okay. so we don't need that anymore and then we say that store current article kids it's uh, I guess we can just say comments right and then it's going to be store for an article kids app uh, and again we need awaits promise all so we're going to map that to promises and a map id to get um no what was the function name generate item url all right item url id now we're going to map again this is going to be url we're going to map it to fetch once again very easy then our our json and uh, that's actually all we need to do wait uh, one more thing we need to say that we are no longer loading right okay so once we get this we just um import the function which is going to be say it current article and we just say set current article article right that's that's really all we have to do here and then here in the content this is gonna be um let's just say store article so obviously in the beginning it's not there uh, we are right because we need href here i'm an idiot there we go okay so we click that and you can actually see how it updates and what let me just copy this json because i don't understand what's going on here i, I mean i guess i could just it so we can say pre pre they just stringify it with a now do and that's not exactly the right way of doing that stuff but uh yeah where is my article description where how do i get it don't i have it i don't i guess it doesn't have it because it has the url right okay um right so we get that we get is there an article that has description uh, ask hn or something among those lines i guess we can just consider that it always has the url so we say basically h1 or for an article okay yeah that's, that's good so store article title right then we say a href. So in this case, we're just gonna say store current article URL because we like we just want to give a user the URL here, right? And um, after that, we just print all the comments, right? So we get a div here with the comments, and we say that store current article comments app c so that we if key will be how does our comments look so we got the id so k uh, e id right i mean obviously this is not complete because there are kids to comments so you have to be a bit like uh, get through them if you want to resolve the full comment tree but we're just going to go for the top right now um and that's basically it so it's going to be c text and uh it was just then there's gonna be the uh, old, I guess. 
going to be our user c uh, username by then we just say italic this is going to be c uh, time so i guess we just say new date c time multiply by that i believe they are not using the um okay a map of undefined right so we basically need a thing here so if it's a store current article and store current article uh so it's if current article is there we print all this right um what am i oh right okay we need a fragment fragment around it because we need some parent element of it okay then there we go we got fragments and uh if store um loading article no loading comments right so we actually don't need to put it here but rather over here so loading comments um and loading uh, loading comments and otherwise render this stuff uh we don't need this thing here and i think we're good reload so there we go we got loading articles so once we click it that um all right i yeah okay so time to locale string fix it and uh, we don't really need that json render anymore so if we click here you'll actually see that you know it works as you would expect it to work obviously that doesn't look fancy because you know <laughs> that is not what we're here for but if we go to the network tab let me maybe make the dev tool slightly bigger there we go we go to the dev tool uh, tab and uh, go to the network and uh, touch uh, and say that we have the super shitty internet my favorite profile that like does everything super slow you will actually see that okay maybe that was a bad idea let's put slow 3g you will see that the loading actually takes obviously this takes more time but we have the loading indicators everywhere right so we here's our articles um hey wise still shows oh uh yes you are correct i forgot to update the description i will do that after the stream thank you for uh reminding me so i did update the uh, widget thingy for the saturday already but did not update the description that's correct thank you very much okay um i guess fast 3g maybe because that's a bit too slow okay there we go so we can actually see that the articles are loading it takes okay four seconds that's quite a lot of time actually just for a one fetch request how big is that thing top stories it is 4.7 kilobytes why does it take so much to get it oh because it resolves like a few more kilobytes per story okay yeah and if we click on the article you would immediately see the article but um the comments will resolve over time right and this is like the cool thing is that we did all of this by just assigning objects so uh, doing that in redux would require you quite a lot of time um so this is basically the you know the very simple demo right so i'm gonna stop that i'm gonna add uh, so we're gonna get ignore.nextjs right we don't need that it adds get commits add basic hn i based demo uh, come on there we go all right um so this is the super basic demo now you might be thinking okay so if if it's so amazing if it's so easy to use why is it not super popular yet and why does people not i mean it's it's two kilobytes minified and zipped this is like insane so what are the downsides well the thing is um this this library is based on es6 proxies and reflect api so the, if you're interested by the way how it was built there are really good um, articles explaining the how to build it yourself essentially and uh, explaining how it works so there's obviously introduction and uh, further on here's under the hood no wait this one i think wait a second there was an article explaining how that works 
think it was linked to the, the second. Why should I try it? Um, there was an article somewhere about it, how to build it. Here? I thought it was linked from the repository. Yes, design patterns. Is it here? Yeah, behind your active state. Uh, monkey by the object can clear that is just the a okay let me try to find the article how does it ah there we go there it is okay so it's in a separate section so there is there we go this is the article it basically goes in depth on how the data bindings with the s6 proxies work what is the nx observe library that is used under the hood and how to build your own, right? So if you want, you can just go through it. You can learn about the Reflect API, you can learn about AS6 proxies, and you can build your own similar library, which is way simpler. I mean, it's it's not a big one, as I said, it's like two kilobyte, which is kind of crazy. Now, what are the downsides? Well, the major, the, I guess the primary downside is the fact that you actually need proxies and uh, AS6 proxies and Reflect APIs is not something that can be polyfilled. So if the browser doesn't support them, you won't be able to use this library. Uh, luckily for us, the only browser that doesn't actually support uh, proxies and reflect APIs is the old Internet Explorers that are no longer um, in, no longer supported essentially. And I believe is e e Internet Explorer 11 out of life now? Lifetime. Um... Uh, end of life yes that's what i want end of life i believe it was terminated quite some time ago yeah. whoa no oh, for reals Are you that is way more than i expected is it still supported it can be 2025 right um in the, in the support lifespan faq okay But okay, so basically, unless you have, it's like, it's crazy if it's 2025, but unless you have a customer who is very specifically saying that your app should work in an ancient Internet Explorer 11, which is pain and has to work with anyway, you can use this library, right? So um, there is a way to use it in React Native as well, because I, as far as I know, the React Native doesn't really support proxies out of the box, but you can use the JavaScript core, which does support that. I believe this is what they are suggesting here too. Let me see. Yes, exactly. So they are uh, saying that you need to do the GSC um, Android build. I don't know if there's an iOS equivalent of that, but I imagine not, right? So there's probably, yeah, no, iOS 10. Oh, okay. So iOS 10 actually has proxies. Okay, cool. So you can use it on Android with GSC and uh, on iOS just like this, which is kind of great. Um, iOS 10, obviously, but you know, iOS adoption is not a major problem. So the only problem with this library is that basically it doesn't work on Internet Explorer. But then again, you know, if you don't have to support Internet Explorer doing this, like all, all of this great stuff, instead of running Redux and doing like 2 million lines of boilerplates is kind of amazing. And, um, yeah, I wholeheartedly recommend this library if you are building a new thing and you are not in a need to support ancient browsers. It is damn great. Um, yeah, that's basically it from my side for today, unless you guys have any questions or um, something is unclear or you wanna discuss something else, do let me know. Meanwhile, I will push all of that stuff to the GitHub and uh, yeah. If you don't really have any questions, we can just wrap it up here for today. Right. Full demo for React easy state. There we go. And uh, we also need a readme file. Right? So I'm gonna one um ND. Yes, I'm just gonna copy it from old repos as I usually do because I'm lazy as hell. Go here. Um, uh, read me, read me, read me, come on. Okay, um, example app that uses React easy state as a store. So I'm building on using 
act easy uh, state. Um, all right, let me have a look at the chat. Um, I'm gonna butcher your username, but you are very welcome, Mik Mikel Tiar. Is that is that correct, Mik Mikel Tar? Mik Mikel? I don't know. Please, please tell me how to pronounce him. That is too hard. <laughs> For um, introduction to React Easy State, that's what I'm gonna call the video. And I need to fill that YouTube link here. Simple app that shows how to use. Probably should copy that and start pasting it everywhere because I'm too lazy. State as a store for React apps. Neat. So I guess why not? Let's do this. Related links. React easy state. That's actually all we want to have in there, right? React state. So the cool thing is that actually there is uh, it's quite actively developed, and there is middleware support that is coming in quite soon, which is also pretty neat. So you basically will be able to plug in your middleware. And uh, there's a lot of, I mean, it's it's pretty actively maintained, so it's it's a great thing, it's always great. Git add readme, git add readme, there we go. And I guess I can just, uh, I closed the repository, didn't I? Yes, I did, <laughs> damn it. All right, add this and push it to the origin master. Mikkel, ah, okay. Uh, I do know the name Mikkel, so that makes it easier. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you for uh, tuning in invites. Always welcome on my streams. All right, so I think we are basically done. Yeah, there you go. Okay, cool. So let me just watch it, I guess, if there are any questions here. And uh, yeah, that was quite straightforward. Uh, hey, Renato, yes, you are late. It turned out to be a pretty short stream, but... Um... <laughs> Uh, I mean, the library is so simple that literally all the store fits into 35 lines of code. I just thought it, you know, it was so amazing that I could not not show it off. But just look at this. This is like, hey, now we're loading. Now we're articles. Now we're not loading. All you need to do to make it to basically to use it. Isn't it, isn't that amazing? I mean, in my opinion, it's amazing. Okay. Um, so we're done with this. We're done with this. Yeah, I guess I don't. Do you guys want to see something else? Discuss something else? This lib does work. So I just discussed this. It does work in React Native, but only in specific versions. So the main problem with it is it relies on ES6 proxies and uh, Reflect API. They are not in Internet Explorer and they cannot be polyfilled. So you won't be able to use it there. And in React Native, it is um, usable from iOS. 10, I believe, yes. And for Android, you have to use the GSC, uh, which is the JavaScript core that has the, um, God damn it, proxies in it. Otherwise you won't be able to use it essentially. So like the, this, this line is essentially says it all, right? So if there's ES6 proxies, if they are supported, you can use it. If they are not supported, this library won't work and there's no way to polyfill it, unfortunately, because of the ES5 limitations. Okay, any other questions? So what I wanna do, I think I don't really wanna do anything else. We pushed it, yes we did, we have everything here, we have the readme file, um, cool. Okay, doesn't seem like you guys have any more questions. So again, just, just to give another update on the whole situation with the live streams and videos and everything, I got into elect uh, electronic first, that is not what I want to say, entrepreneur first program. And starting from the next week, so I'm, I'm the next Wednesday, there will be no live stream because I'm going to be traveling to Berlin. Um, I will be trying to build a startup. I have no idea how this program works. Um, it's basically bringing up 50 people together and putting them in the same room and making them form teams and build stuff. So I don't know, what, I don't know what's going to happen in there. But um, I think I will do like live streams and videos 
covering my journey there. So we'll talk about what we did, how it worked. Uh, it's kind of, I, I mean, I think it still fits under building things with JavaScript because I will be building things and maybe most likely with JavaScript because it's still my primary language and I enjoy a lot writing it. So um, yeah, this is the general gist of it. As I said, I will keep doing the weekly news, but there will be moved to Saturday. That is one change. And then there was a really cool suggestion on the YouTube video and announcement I posted. So someone suggested that I alternate the streams, uh, like one week I do the stream or video about the startups thing and the other week I do the programming. So if I will have enough free time and if the program won't be like kidding me, that is exactly what we're gonna do because I still enjoy programming a lot and I still wanna do that. So yeah, if you have any other suggestions or ideas, please do send them my way. Um, there is a high possibility that we'll have to shift the today stream to the later time because I might not be free at this time, but we're gonna see how that all works out because I honestly, I don't really know any schedule or whatever. I like I have, <laughs> I don't really know how this stuff works, right? So I never, um, never done anything quite like this. I've been in a traditional accelerators, but this is not it. So they didn't ask for any ideas or anything. They just hired people or accepted people based on their, uh, stories i guess and uh yeah we are gonna see how all of that's gonna end up um yes people uh yeah uh Mikkel, thank you thank you for the congratulations that is really um i mean i didn't expect didn't expect all of that stuff to happen to be honest um Yes. So yeah, I'm going to try to start a business and uh, yes, Entrepreneur First accepts people from abroad. There is actually quite, so they have three locations right now, Berlin, London, and Singapore. And we, so the, the Berlin one is they just started it and we are like, we have 50 people, I believe in, in this, or at least 44 in this cohort. And I've seen people from at least seven countries, I think, right now. I mean, some of them already live in Germany. Some of them will be moving here or coming here for the duration of the program. So this is not, they basically don't really care much where you're from as long as you can go here for the program, right? Um, during the podcast, I mean, that's, that's so basically why I suggest doing the updates and experience uh, on the EF thing during the podcast. That might be optional. Oh, bleh, bleh. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I've been doing too much hard tasks today. My head just refuses to think. That might be an option, but um, I don't know. Like, I mean, the JavaScript news usually take about one hour and then like talking more over that without sort of preparing would be a bit tough. So I would prefer to have it as a separate thing. Plus um, I think that, you know, basically the podcast would make it more interesting for people who come to solely watch and listen about the news, right? And then if you are not, if you don't care about the startups, you can just don't watch my videos on startups. So this is my thinking basically. Okay, let me see. Any other questions or, or other stuff you want to ask, discuss, whatever, suggestions? Best. I'm barely thinking right now. I think I just need some coffee and play some video games. Okay. Doesn't seem like you guys uh, have any more questions. Well, thank you very much for staying with me through today's stream. Uh, the demo is now on GitHub. I seriously recommend checking this library out. It is amazing. And it I think it's gonna change the way I build React apps because it is so easy to use. Um, that's basically it for today. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the hell is gonna happen with my channel and my streams in the upcoming weeks. Um, thank you for watching basically and uh, I see you next time. Bye.